The brush tool has been enhanced in Animate CC. And I'm just going to walk you through some of the ways you can control the brush now. And so with the brush selected in properties panel, you'll see I have a cool slider for selecting the size of the brush. And not only that, I have a slider for setting the minimum size of the brush. So now when I draw, I'm, I'm making good use of that pressure sensitivity. So if I increase the size of the brush and, um, and you know, play around with the minimum size of the brush, you can see how that plays an effect on the stroke. And so what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to grab, um, I'm going to turn on object drawing mode. And I'm going to mix a little bit of transparency into this black color. I'm going to do this because what I'm going to do is just sketch out something first. And I kind of like to draw this way if I'm just sketching something. So let's draw, um, let's just create a character. And this is for me, um, with the transparency mixed in, it kind of gives that nice feel of, of like using pencil especially when you have um, the combination of alpha and object drawing mode on. You can see the layering of transparency. Okay, so I've got a, a nice little character roughed out here. And so now what I like to do is actually go and create on um, frame two a blank keyframe. It's gonna hit F7 and then turn on onion skin. And now I can see a ghost of my image and I'm going to now do sort of a cleanup version of this drawing. I'm going to remove the alpha transparency. I like the brush um, size of eight with the minimum size of zero. And if I want to save this as a preset, I can just click this little plus button here. And that saves this as a preset. I continue to press the plus button. And those will be saved as presets and use them later just by clicking on them. So now I'm going to redraw and clean up my drawing in frame two. I'm going to turn off object drawing. I'm going to do everything in this one frame. I might make a few design changes along the way, but for the most part, I'm gonna just stick to the drawing at hand as we have it. So now what I wanna do is grab, make sure the brush is selected, which it is, and the sub selection tool, instead of painting normal, as you'll see here, I'm gonna select paint behind. I'm gonna make a pretty big brush. And I'm just going to actually freehand paint this. And by choosing paint under, it's painting underneath the existing strokes. And again, with brush tool selected, the sub selection tool that we want to use is paint inside. And what this is going to allow me to do is once I click down on an existing fill color, wherever I paint, it's only going to paint inside that fill color. So this is a nice handy, quick way to add some shadows and shading to characters. And now let's mix a little color for her eyes. And while this is selected, let's add a little bit of depth to her eyes. Again, brush tool. I'm going to paint inside just like that. Let's mix in a nice dark brown, maybe a little bit of red in there. Make a nice big brush. Let's make sure we're painting behind. Now we can be pretty loose. Now let's add a little bit of depth to her hair. So let's make some highlights. Just make a lighter, makes a lighter version of that. Brush tool is selected and let's say, let's paint inside as our sub selection. Actually, here's a cool, um, here's another cool sub selection feature. If we select the brush, and let's choose as a sub-selection, paint selection, and then select just the hair fill. Now, wherever we paint, we'll only paint inside the color that is selected. And this time, I am going to go back to painting inside. So what I'm going to do is select this shape, hold down shift and select a little bit more of that fill. Grab the paint brush tool and then I'm going to choose as my sub selection paint selection. And now I can draw her eyebrows in without worrying about overlapping the line of her hair right there. And that's just some of the ways you can use the brush tool to draw or paint inside of Animate CC.
In this video, I am going to show you a new tool called the Asset Warp Tool. So here I have a character. Uh, all of its parts are nested inside a symbol. I'm going to double click because this is where we're going to actually perform the animation. And here in the timeline, you'll notice I have three different layers. The match head itself, this symbol here. Um, I have the flame art itself. And while we're at it, let's name that. And then the bottom layer is the stick. I'm going to lock the stick layer and the match head layer for now because we're not going to be editing those. And I'm going to convert those to outlines because I just want to concentrate visually on the flame itself. So the Acid Warp tool is this icon here. It's a little push pin icon. And once selected, all we need to do is click inside the artwork itself to start placing pins. So the first pin placement I'm going to make down here, basically where the flame connects with the matchstick. And now this pin is represented here by the center dot and this outer dashed circle. And you'll also notice a mesh has been applied to my shape. So let's create a few more additional pins. I'm just going to click in the artwork where I know I'm going to want to control the artwork. And that should pretty much do it. And now the fun part where we get to animate this shape. And in the flame layer that contains our flame artwork, I'm going to create a keyframe on every other frame. And so now in this second keyframe here on frame three, this is where I'm going to start to manipulate my mesh using the Asset Warp tool. So I'm going to start here and let's make the tip of this flame go in the opposite direction. So you can click directly on that center point and move it to a new location. And if you hover over the outer dashed circle, you'll be able to click and drag and rotate the artwork. And repeating this technique, you can manipulate your mesh shape. And now that I'm kind of happy with the artwork on that keyframe, I'm going to create an additional keyframe here on frame five. And I'm going to continue editing the shape in unpredictable ways. Sometimes it even helps to study a flame, like even light a candle and, and watch how the flame flickers and try to repeat the randomness. Let's create a couple more keyframes and play with this mesh using the Asset Warp tool a little bit more. And you can see how quick and easy it is to deform your shape in very predictable ways. You can even right click and apply a classic tween to the keyframes that contain your mesh. So the Asset Warp Tool is a great new feature, which actually cuts down a lot of drawing time since you can manipulate a single shape in so many different ways. There are many ways to draw inside of Adobe Animate CC, and I'm going to show you one of my favorite ways using mostly primitive tools in combination with object drawing mode, snap to objects, and a little bit of editing with the selection tool, which is the black arrow up here on top. Now the first thing I want to do is to make sure that I can see all of the available tools in my toolbar as well as their sub selections. So I'm going to just click and drag the left edge to create two columns as we see here. Now I can see everything that the toolbar has to offer. Now I want not just the rectangle tool but the rectangle primitive tool. So I long press to bring that other option up and I'm going to select rectangle primitive. Now you'll notice in properties panel I have a rectangle options section and the slider, which is currently at its default setting of zero, what that does is allows me to adjust how the corners look on the primitive I'm going to create. So let me actually set this back to zero just to show you. I have a skin tone here I already like, um, but I'm going to make a shape for you and just kind of give you an idea of what this option does here, this slider. So if I just click and drag that, you'll notice the corners of my shape will change and adjust accordingly. If I slide the slider all the way to the left, the corners invert. And if I slide it all the way to the right, I get the most rounded corners. Okay. Having said that, let me actually delete this and start over. What I like to do is grab this rectangle tool and before I do anything, slide that all the way to the right to a value of 100. And I'm going to start by drawing the character's head. And next I'm going to move on to the eyes. And for that, I'm just going to grab